welcome to the Build a Life After Loss podcast, where we inspire you to build a life of purpose and joy. Our aim is to encourage your hope in the future and strengthen your confidence. I'm your host, Julie Clough, Life Coach and Certified Grief Recovery Specialist. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Episode 67, Increasing Hope. As you know, I'm writing a book, and as per my publisher, it's meant to be inspirational. And that feels like a tall order. I, it's actually, if I think about it, it can become overwhelming. So I try to just split it up into manageable pieces. And I'm hopeful that as I work on it, it will be inspirational. If you haven't already, be sure and get on the mailing list uh, to be the first to know when the book is out. Last week, I set aside more than half of my week for writing the book, and I wrote 14,000 words. Now, the brain loves numbers, so anytime you can set a goal with numbers, that's a good thing. 14,000 words, that's more than a quarter of the book. And I'm excited to be making that kind of progress because with those additional 14,000 words, I'm about halfway through writing the first draft and I'm celebrating. I celebrated last week that I accomplished that this week. I'm still celebrating that, that I'm celebrating that I was able to do that. It's, it's not easy, but I'm super grateful for heavenly help and for the support of my family and friends as I work on this project and celebrating your wins is important. Recognize the tiniest things that go well and celebrate. When you do that, you'll start to notice more and more good things that are happening for you. More and more things that you are doing that are worthwhile, that you feel good about, and it will increase your success energy. But I also acknowledge that if you're listening, you may be in heavy grief. You may be in those early, excruciatingly painful early days of loss and grief. And getting up in the morning may be your biggest win right now. And that's totally okay. Because I lived those days too. I know what that's like. And it's not easy. And I applaud you. I applaud you for listening today and giving yourself some great input because when you give yourself good input, when you give yourself inspirational things or things that are positive and uplifting, that helps you. As you feed yourself hopeful messages, you'll increase your hope in the future, which is an important aspect of healing. And that's what I want to explore today is how do you increase your hope? Because I talk about hope a lot. I think it's super important. It is so important. Hope is essential to healing. If you don't have a hope that you can heal, how can you heal? You've you've got to have hope. And a couple of the most important feelings that you can generate, that you can work towards is a desire for healing and hope of healing hope for healing. So we're going to talk about some of those things that you can do to increase your hope in the future. And I could probably make a list of a hundred things to do to increase your hopefulness, but I'm going to keep it to five today. And the first I've kind of already talked about, again, that's recognizing your wins, recognizing that your actions matter, your thoughts matter. Celebrate the little things every day, the little things. And if that's that you got up and put on pants today, that's awesome. If it's that you brushed your hair today, that's great. If it's that you helped your child do homework today, good. Whatever it is that you did today that you can recognize as a win Really, really think about what were the wins today. In fact, Sean Aker, he's a speaker and a happiness researcher, suggests that each day you write down one positive experience that you had. He says doing this practice, quote, allows your brain to relive it, unquote. In general, we are far too hard on ourselves, aren't we? Aren't we? Aren't we all? 
Like, think about all of the demands that we put on ourselves and how hard we on our, our how hard we are on ourselves. And when we can start to acknowledge even our small wins, we get better at recognize our goodness and our progress. So number two is Psychology Today article suggests you look for role models. And I'm going to quote them specifically. They said, look for role models who have found solutions. There are many, many people who have overcome tremendous adversity read their stories and surrounding yourself with reading their stories and surrounding yourself with supportive messages and people can help you build hope. Okay. So in that same article, they explain learned helplessness, which was discovered by Martin Seligman. He's one of the founding fathers of positive psychology. And this goes back, it goes back to the first thing that I mentioned, which was recognize your wins recognizing that your actions matter. So learned helplessness happens when you go through difficult, challenging experiences like we all have gone through. Things that are outside of your control, you can start to feel like you have no control. So if you've gone through difficult things where you didn't have control, you can start to feel like you have no control anywhere in your life which can create a situation where you stop trying. Because if you don't have any control, if you don't have any influence over your life, then we we just start thinking that, that there's nothing that we can do, so we stop trying. And this is obviously what you want to avoid. You want to avoid learned helplessness. And if you have, if you find yourself in that position where you, you realize that, you know, maybe, maybe it hasn't gone so far that you've stopped trying, but you can see how you have experienced some of that helplessness. Then it recognition is the first step. So I was working with a client recently who is going through a really tremendously challenging experience and And I know where this is coming from, but I noticed he was saying, I have no control repeatedly. Is there some major things that are happening right now where other people have a lot of control? And so his thought process was, I have no control. And he was kind of repeating that self. I mean, obviously it was, it was in his mind because it was coming out of his mouth. And, and that's a very dangerous message for our brain. If you repeatedly tell yourself you have no control, you will start to live as if you have no control, but you do. You may not have control over a specific situation like this client. There were things that were outside of his control, but there were also areas where he did have control. And there's always areas where you do have control. And I pointed out this trend to my client, this trend of him saying that and invited him to make a list of what he does have control over. And he found this a great practice. And just recognizing that he was telling himself over and over that he had no control was a huge shift for him. And then to be able to right down where he did have control was a, an even, even greater shift. And this is what I do for my clients. I educate them on grief and the recovery process, and I help them see their own brains. Because when the words come out of our mouth, it's because it's in our mind. And there are nuances that you don't even recognize, nuances to the way that you're experiencing your life and the way that you're perceiving things. Because you're so used to the way her brain works, you don't even, you don't even hear it or see it. It's, it's kind of that whole, you know, you probably have heard this before, like a fish doesn't know he's in water because he's always in water. So it's kind of that same thing. There's just, there's just certain things that we habitually think or do and we don't even recognize that we're thinking those things and we don't even recognize the harm that we're doing. So anyway, recognize your wins each day and look for role models. And I hope, I hope that you're listening because I, I want to be one of those role models for you. 
If you don't have hope for your future right now, even using an affirmation like, if Julie can heal, maybe I can too. If Julie can heal, maybe I can too. Look for hope around you and use it as a stepping stone. Stair step beliefs can be very helpful. So even if, even if you're at that place right now where you're thinking, I don't know if I can do this. If you can look around you, either at myself or a friend, and you can say, if they can heal, maybe I can too. So the third thing is to be kind to yourself. And I've talked about this a lot. Like we are, you know, I just mentioned how hard we are on ourselves, but be kind to yourself and others. How can you express kindness to yourself today? Can you take a break for a warm cup of tea and listen to some quiet music that's uplifting? I love a good cup of peppermint tea. And if you live somewhere where the weather is nice and you can take that cup of tea outside and enjoy that warm tea in nature and listen to the sounds of nature and put your feet in the grass and feel the breeze. Oh, that's so healing. Being out in nature is so healing. Can you read something inspiring? How can you be kind to yourself today? Can you practice some kind messages? I'm going to give you some suggestions here. Kind messages that you can share with yourself. I'm whole and I always have been. I am enough. I am loved. I follow my intuition. I totally love and accept myself. What statements can you practice that would uplift you? Be kind to yourself and to others. Who do you know who would appreciate a kind word from you? Text them today or pick up the phone or send a small handwritten note. Or even if you see a quote that's inspiring to you that you think, oh, I think my friend Susan would enjoy this, send it to her. Smile at someone in the grocery store. Compliment the next person you meet. Find ways to lift others and you'll lift yourself as well. Okay, so number four is lean on your faith. If you have faith in God or a higher power, that is a wonderful source of hope. Do you have a daily spiritual practice? As you practice your spirituality, it will open your mind to learning and hope. Your perspective will change. And you'll be able to avoid that learned helplessness that I referred to earlier because you will gain a perspective that you are never alone. There is always heavenly hope or help help from the universe to build you and to support you. I heard a quote this weekend, actually at church, the Center of Bible Engagement. They study, as the name suggests, the people people's engagement with the Bible. And from their website... What they have found in their study is that, quote, the life of someone who engages in the scriptures four or more times a week looks radically different from the life of someone who does not. In fact, the lives of Christians who do not engage the Bible most of the days of the week are statistically the same as the lives of non-believers. Okay, what was the magic number? Four. Four or more engaged in spiritual practices four or more times a week. Part of the research that they did suggests that those who engage in the Bible four times a week, these are just a couple of the of the statistics, but they found that those who engaged in the Bible four times or more a week are 59% less likely to view pornography. And I would imagine that would extend to other risky behaviors also. And they are 30% less likely to struggle with loneliness. So if you're struggling with loneliness, leaning on your faith can be very, very helpful. And this speaks, this whole idea, this study, this speaks to the importance of continuing or strengthening or even starting a spiritual practice. That could look like Bible study. That could look like meditation. There's so many meditation apps out there that you can download and just listen and learn more about meditation. What is your spiritual practice? What are you practicing? And how can that increase your hope? Number five, 
write about what you want in the future. I did a whole episode about creating vision, which was episode 11. And on that, on that episode of the podcast, I share a formula for figuring out what you want in the future. And when, what I found for myself and what I've noticed in other people is when you have a major loss that turns your world upside down, everything changes instantly. And The early days are really spent in so much turmoil and anguish, but as you start to heal, you may notice that what you thought you wanted in the future is not what you want now. It may be because of, specifically because of the trauma that you've experienced, but it may just be a shift in your perspective that has changed what you want for your future, and that's completely okay. I know that I made that major shift myself. What I thought I wanted in my future totally changed. But you get to redefine your future. Remember, you are not your past. Your past and your losses do not have to define you. In fact, sometimes I have to be really careful now that I spend a lot of time talking about loss and grief. And I I want to be really careful and intentional that I don't get sucked back into thinking that this defines me because it doesn't. I'm a whole person. I am, it's not about my loss and my grief. Those things have educated me. They have influenced my learning. They have, they are part of my experience. And I take that experience and I continue to learn and grow from that. But it does not define who I am. My life changed radically the moment Carrie and David died. And it was painful and awful for quite a while, for a long time. But eventually, through seeking help and working through my pain, I am on the other side of the grief and pain. And now I enjoy a wonderful life and beautiful memories of my beautiful children. And I hope Carrie and David are proud of me, as I hope all of my children are. But I had to go through that process of healing and finding hope and getting to the other side with all of my losses, with my brother's death, with divorce, with health issues. All of those things required that I learn and grow because when we can't change the situation, we are, we are in a position that we have to change ourselves. So what were those five suggestions for increasing hope? I want to review those one more time for you. So number one, acknowledge your wins each day. Write down something positive that happened that day. Number two, look for role models. Number three, be kind to yourself and others. Number four, lean on your faith. And number five, write about what you want in the future. I want to hear about your experiences. If you, if you found this helpful, if you practiced any of this, I would love to hear about it. And if you could use assistance in reframing your past and visioning a new future for yourself, I hope you will reach out today to talk to me about how I can help you with that. Thanks for joining me today. What's happening for you right now? I'd love to hear your story. Email me at julie at buildalifeafterloss.com. You can also visit me at buildalifeafterloss.com. And remember to subscribe in your podcast app so you'll get the new episode each Wednesday. Be sure to leave us a review. All of the links are in the show notes. As a grief coach, I can lead you gently down the path of hope and healing. Schedule your free discovery session today. Remember, I believe in you. Talk to you next week. Bye.